Back in the day when I was a youngin and I was actually going out of my way to keep up weekly with some of these CW Arrowverse shows like Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, and The Flash, I would always wonder if Batman would ever pop up or why they never fully incorporated the character in his mythos. I thought it would have been cool to see their take on Batman interact with The Flash or Green Arrow and be a part of the main core cast of heroes you would see in crossovers like Crisis on Earth X or some of the mini crossovers between a couple of shows here and there. They pretty much had the blueprint for a Batman-esque show with Arrow and Oliver's demeanor his rogues gallery, the Arrow Cave, having an extensive roster of psychics and allies. A large part of Batman's absence has to do with the infamous Bat embargo, which would prohibit certain DC shows from implementing Batman in any major way. This was especially prevalent in some of the other DC animated shows, as WB wouldn't allow multiple versions of Batman characters to exist in the same medium, I guess. At first, any references to Batman across the CW Arrowverse shows were very subtle and would never mention him by name. Maybe they'd name drop Gotham City, but never Bruce or Batman. So people see this big guy in this scary mask and they freak out. They run away, just like Clark's friend. Oh, you mean, I feel like they're more frenemies. That was awesome. We're moving back to Gotham. We'll be watching. We're on site. Well, I thought that it was time you got a code name. It's perfect. Gonna go with Oracle, but it's taken. Over time, however, you would slowly start to see them have a bit more leeway in incorporating subtle lore here and there on Batman's existence to where they'd actually name drop Bruce Wayne. They could have put Bruce Wayne's head on that body. Has Bruce Wayne left Gotham to hang out in Star City recently? No. This would eventually lead to their first actual implementation of a Batman-related character with Catherine Kane or Batwoman's first appearance in the mini crossover event between The Flash, Arrow, and Supergirl, where they straight up go to Gotham City. You see the bat signal and you learn more about this universe's Bruce Wayne. You still think he's a myth? Yeah! Batman's real. Every day I am thankful the CW never got the opportunity to develop a full on proper Batman show with free reign to use any and all Batman characters cause a show like that would have been A TWO PACK OF ASS <laughs> If they are somehow capable of producing garbage like Gotham Knights and Batwoman only using the lesser known Bat Family characters, who knows what they would have done if they had access to the core Bat Family cast. Firstly, the comparisons between a hypothetical Batman CW show and Arrow would have been non-stop since they just made Oliver Queen a pseudo Batman. There's a chance the first couple of seasons could have been solid, but the CW's writing became consistently garbage after a certain period of time. I mean, the first seasons of Batwoman and Gotham Knights should be considered crimes against humanity, made only by a group of incompetent writers. The soap opera elements would have been yucky. There'd probably be some stupid love triangle between Barbara Gordon, Dick Grayson, and Jason Todd. Cassandra Kane and Stephanie Brown might have had a sister-like dynamic, but then they'd probably start dating for some reason. It's clear as day that these writers have no fundamental understanding of Batman as a character, as you'd learn more on what actually happened to Bruce Wayne in the main Earth of the Arrowverse? Out of all the characters you had the opportunity to give their own TV show, why Batwoman? I mean, I have no issues with Catherine Kane as Batwoman, I'm just wondering why I picked this Bat family member in particular. And it sucks how often people confuse the characters of Batgirl and Batwoman, because I would hate for Batgirl to get confused with this garbage. Oh yeah, I know about Batgirl, uh, isn't she the one with that awful CW show? <laughs> How in depth were the restrictions on what characters they could and couldn't use? To top things off, this bat suit is straight booty cheeks. What the hell even is this? Somehow, this isn't even the worst bat suit seen on a TV show. Oh my god! What is that? Man, these modern TV shows cannot get any elements of a bat suit right. Gotham Knights, poor excuse of a cowl, the Gotham TV show that aired on Fox, the CW Airverse goofy bat suit, even Titans despite the fact that the show has some really well designed costumes for some of their characters. While Titans isn't a CW show, it's a part of the established multiverse seen in the Crisis on Infinite Earths event in which it was designated as Earth 9. This is also seen in season 4 of Titans when Beast Boy travels across the multiverse thanks to his access to the red. They think I'm him. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work. Yeah, you said it, queen. That's all you. Hard work paid off and everything. It's not like you took Batman's suit, all of his gadgets and weaponry, his base of operations, and even his tech guy. That's all you. He don't deserve any of the credit. They never actually properly explain as to what happened to Bruce Wayne. They just say he disappeared and was just never heard from again. Wayne left Gotham three years ago. Why? To go where? No one knows. If you're visiting Gotham to compare grappling hooks with Batman, you are out of luck. No one's seen him in years. I would never compare myself to a total badass like Batman. Seems strange, doesn't it? Bruce Wayne and Batman disappeared from Gotham around the same time. When Batman left, the city went to five different kinds of hell. 
took a toll on Bruce. Is that why you left? Still trying to figure that out. He decided to leave Gotham after killing the Joker, and god damn it, what is with these shows and having Batman kill the Joker? Titans did this same nonsense in season 3 with the bastardization of the Under the Red Hood storyline. Not to mention that Bruce Wayne was an absolute psycho and one of the worst modern iterations of the character that I've seen. So yeah, Bruce just completely abandoned his life's purpose in being the protector of Gotham on some Disney Luke Skywalker timing, which led to an even higher crime rate to the point where his cousin had to come in and take up the mantle. Good job. There's a bunch of lore that obviously happened off screen and this was a more experienced Batman, fought off a good amount of his iconic rogues gallery like Joker, Rachel Ghoul, had a few allies around him as he also hired Lucius Fox as his tech guy later on in his career. The Crisis on Infinite Earths event had this thing where the monitor stated how there were seven paragons or heroes across the multiverse that could band together to stop the threat of the anti-monitor. Some of the already known paragons included Supergirl, who was the paragon of hope, Sarah Lance was the paragon of destiny, Brennan Rowell Kingdom Come Superman was the Paragon of Truth, and it was believed at first that an older Bruce Wayne of Earth-99 was the Paragon of Courage, which is where we see Kevin Conroy play an older Bruce Wayne in live action for the first time. Man, they had pretty much everybody hyped with this. Surely they would never fumble the bag in having the only live action appearance of Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne, right? Right? Man, just remembering how disappointed I was with how they utterly wasted this Bruce Wayne, I'm gonna start tweaking again, bro. I'm gonna crash out, bro. I've lost track of how many people I've killed. You start with a code, then you take one life, then another, then another. There was no hope for this world. It's because you killed Superman. The guy's not a paragon of anything. I was right. Clark always said yes to anyone with a badge. We're a flag. Life only makes sense if you force it to. <laughs> Let it end. This world's not worth saving in any universe. <laughs> There is no hope. What the fuck is this piece of shit? So this alternate Batman pretty much went on a killing spree. He's very old and bitter to the point where he even killed Superman. Like this dude is the twisted version of the Kingdom Come Batman mixed in with a little bit of that Injustice Superman sauce. Bro is just like yeah screw it let every single Earth in the multiverse die for all I care. Zero F is given with this Bruce Wayne. Bro who wrote this death scene? He just gets kicked and then hits a wire or something and that's it. It was so abrupt. All of this was just to show that Catherine Kane herself was actually the true paragon of courage this whole time. Yeah, well, Bruce's body isn't on the ship. But you are. I said the path to Earth-99 would lead you to the Paragon. You are the bat of the future, Kate Kane. You are the Paragon of Courage. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. Ah, Fuck my life. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> Fuck off. My nigga, did you have to utterly disrespect Bruce Wayne in order to convey that fact? This scene serves no purpose in elevating any of these characters. Sure, it would have been fine if it didn't serve any actual plot significance and if it was just a really cool cameo. While it was really cool to see live action Kevin Carter for the first time, you couldn't have come up with something else a bit more competently. They utterly fumbled the bag with this one. Damn you, the CW. What the fuck? is wrong with you niggas. The situation surrounding the Batwoman show is beyond hilarious because the main actress for Batwoman, Ruby Rose, just straight up left the show after season one. So they had to get a new actress for the role, but they in fact did not recast Katherine Kane, but created a completely different character who wears the mantle of Batwoman. Apparently Kate Kane went missing after a plane crash in which the new Batwoman just so happens to randomly stumble upon the Batwoman suit and yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. And somehow things get even worse with Gotham Knights. You would think that things would get, or at least have the chance to get better somewhat, since the writers had the opportunity to craft a show not tied to the Arrowverse. Yeah, the second they announced this show was being made by the Batwoman writers, I could smell the doo-doo from a mile away. Batman dies from falling atop of Wayne Tower as he was attacked while putting on his cowl, so you just see him in a business suit with the sorriest bat cowl ever put to screen. Absolutely zero saws with his Batman, zero out of 10. This is supposed to be Carrie Kelly as Robin. Why'd they pull her straight out? of a Spy Kids movie. So you knew my dad was Batman. I became his eyes and ears. Called me his little Robin. 
if I'm gonna keep it real, I would rather these shows not use Batman at all than completely butcher his character if you can't use the character in full. Titans is an absolute disgrace of a show and that Bruce Wayne was horrible. We've seen the horrors the CW has brought forth with their depictions of the Batman mythos. You can definitely see the limitations as they for sure would have done a full on Batman show if given the opportunity to do so. Stop doing Batman shows without Batman. No one cares to see the lesser known characters in dog water tears levels of writing. One of the only shows that comes to mind that is set in the Batman world but doesn't feature Batman himself is Gotham and they were smart enough to have it just be a prequel story focusing on Jim Gordon and the plethora of Batman villains and have Bruce Wayne still be a child. You'd see the origins of said villains and showcase what most adaptations don't often do and show the years of Bruce Wayne after his parents died but before he travels the world to train. There's probably a timeline out there where Batman got the Superman and Lois treatment where Superman first appeared in the second season of Supergirl after numerous faceless cameos and name drops. Then after some time he would later get his own show. So in a hypothetical scenario, Batman would get his own actual proper TV show after appearing in an episode of Batwoman. And my god, I'm so glad this never became a reality. I like to think of Batwoman and Gotham Knights as tests to see what these writers could do if given the Batman IP, and them folk at the CW did not cook at all. The entire kitchen was burned in the process. Gotham Knights was so bad, the video game sharing the same name had to publicly announce how they have absolutely nothing to do with the show. Obviously they did this to avoid audience confusion, but it's just funnier to think of it in that context. But one thing they both have in common is that they somehow both fumbled the Court of Owls. And let's be honest, the Batman mythos deserves so much better than the CW nonsense. I'd rather not see some of my favorite Bat family members get butchered and character running left and right. Superman and Lois is one of the only good ones that aired on that whole platform and after that show ends with season 4, CW please never cook again with the DC IP, y'all sorry as hell.